Would you love to step confidently on stage or in front of the camera without worrying about how your body looks? Without all of that self-consciousness that just gets in the way of you delivering your most powerful message to those that you serve? If so, stay tuned. How do you feel about your body? Does your body image bring you confidence and ease, or do you judge yourself? And that judgment gets in the way of you confidently stepping forward to express your message. Are you judgmental about how you see yourself on video, or maybe can't even stand to watch? Well, I know how you feel. I was there at one point. Today, I wanna to share with you an interview I filmed with a very special guest that will help you transform your relationship with your body so that you can step forward to be more confident, to embody your message. I just want to note that I filmed this last year for Video Messengers, but I think it applies to all transformational messengers or even anyone who wants to transform the way that they see their body. Lemuela Christina Duskis is the founder of Your Body Relationship creator and teacher of the Love Your Body class. She is a body relationship specialist and a global best-selling author of the book, Your Body Relationship, Overcoming Weight Obsession. What makes her unique is that she doesn't teach you what you should or shouldn't do. She teaches you how to get in touch with your own inner wisdom so that you can find what's true for you. This approach has led to people all over the world being freed from their insecurities about who they are, who they're not, and not being good enough. If you have insecurities about your body, the information that Lemuela is going to share with you today could transform the way you feel about yourself. I'm very honored to have you here, Lemuela. Thank you. You came all the way to Northern California. I know you're on vacation and you took some time to spend with us so that you can share your amazing gift with all of us. Thank you Thank for you. that. Thank you, Ron. I'm super excited to be here and to share with the world um, what I know about loving your body. So yeah, tell me a little bit more about that and how your journey started because people are probably looking at you and they're like, wow, she's attractive. She has nothing to worry about her looks or weight, but shed, shed a little bit of light of how you went on this journey. So for me, my journey starts when I was 11 years old. Um, so let me just say, I feel great in my body now. I feel mm -hmm. very confident in my body. Um, I'm really connected to my body and I'm healthier now than I've ever been. Um, but it wasn't always like that for me. And for about 20 years of my life, I was really disgusted with my body. I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I was ashamed and my weight fluctuated. Um, about 40 pounds and I would mm -hmm. gain and I would lose weight and I would gain weight and I would lose weight and um, But no matter what weight I was at I was never happy mm -hmm. Because it's not actually about the weight. It's about what you believe About yourself and what you believe about your body and all these judgments that um, we have been sold by society that we take on as This is who I am or this is how I'm supposed to be and so um, my journey with my body started when I was 11 years old and I went on my first diet and um, I just, wow. yeah, I was 11. You know what? 11. Yeah. Like, who would have thought 11? I know. And, you know, people have asked me, wow, you must have been really overweight at 11 years old. And I'm like, no, I was 112 pounds. I was the same height I am now, five foot one. Um, and I wasn't overweight. But that doesn't matter because I believed I was fat. Mm. And, um, you know, the, the adults in my life, for whatever reason, they let me go on this diet at this program. And um, the program accepted me into their mm -hmm. program. Yeah, like it was okay for an 11 year old yeah. who looked fine, didn't, wasn't overweight by any measure, yeah. go on a diet. 
because it's all about the money, you know? Yeah. So, so they, they took me in and um, I remember them setting a goal weight for me of 103 pounds. I remember going to meetings and I remember, you know, waiting in line to get on the scale and I remember being hungry. That's mm -hmm. like my biggest takeaway. It's like, I was hungry. And of course I lost the weight and guess what? I gained it back. And yeah. so then I went on another diet to lose five pounds at a shake for breakfast, a shake for dinner, or a shake for lunch, and then... I remember those commercials. They were everywhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where I got it from, you know? And um, so I lost the weight, and then I gained it back. Yeah. And so yeah. this really started um, a roller coaster of yes. gaining and losing weight for me. And the first time... I actually over ate or I binged ate was I was 14 years old and I was like, okay, I got to lose some weight. I'm not going to eat anything but a few crackers a day. And that lasted a couple of hours. I went to go have a couple of crackers and I ate the entire box. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what just happened? Throughout my life, I, I would starve, I would overeat. I would starve, I would overeat. Um, and there was a point where I couldn't starve anymore and I was just overeating. And at that point, I got really scared because I felt totally out of control because it's one thing if you can, you know, not eat and stay skinny, mm -hmm. but when you're totally out of control and you're overeating and you're binge eating, it's like, help, I don't know what to do. It's, it's a really scary yeah. place. Yeah. And I know that a lot of people in the world can relate to that and they want help but they don't know how and yes. where to go and so um, throughout those years I went to hypnotherapy I was part of a 12-step program um, and I did talk therapy I read books and I learned things along the way that helped me to not overeat or not overeat all the time um, but there was still something missing and one day I realized, oh, you know, I don't really think about, you know, food anymore. I don't really worry about my weight anymore. I, I feel great. I was like, well, what happened? How, mm -hmm. how did that happen? How did that come about? And it wasn't overnight. It was, you know, actually a process of like 20 something years, but I realized I had built a relationship with my body and building that relationship with my body changed everything, mm. everything. Wow. Wow. That sounds yeah. really powerful. So tell me, Lemuela, why are you so passionate to help people that have this problem with their self-image and their body? You know, I am so passionate because I struggled for so long with just feeling so disappointed in myself, disappointed in my body, um, just ashamed. I struggled so much that I don't want anyone else to experience what I experienced, mm -hmm. but I know that so many people do. Yeah. And because I don't struggle with that anymore, I really want to help people to come out of it. Um, I mean, there were times when I would, I would miss out on events because mm -hmm. I was too embarrassed to be seen yeah. looking the way that I did or looking the way that I believed mm -hmm. I looked. And I mean, I have, I've known other people that have experienced that as well, where they miss, they, you're missing out on life because you have a belief that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy. And so my passion to help people really comes from that because I don't want anyone to experience that. We're actually preventing people from seeing our beauty when we get caught up in this, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, because what we share with the world is an insecurity instead of our light, our beautiful light. And I know that when you're listening to this, you have a beautiful light, you will have a beautiful message, you wanna make a big difference in this world. So now what is that step that they can take so that they can start to create that relationship? The first step is getting in touch with who you really are. And you know, our society doesn't teach us to show up as who we truly are. Our society teaches us to show up as someone else, mm -hmm. to show up as how society says that we should show up. All these different people that are in the media that 
you know, we can buy their products to, to look like them or whatever. But society doesn't teach us to show up as who we truly are. Mm -hmm. So that question of, you know, if I were truly being me, who would I be? That's a great place to start. You can even just journal that out. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of people haven't even had the awareness of, Oh, I'm not functioning from me. I'm functioning from everyone else's point of view of who I should be. Yes. So that's, I would say start there. Um, and then also when you connect to your body, when you have a relationship with your body, your relationship to everything else um, becomes more clear and more loving as well. So I have what I call the three steps to building a healthy and happy relationship with your body. And there's communication, kindness, and honoring. Mm -hmm. And so how many times are people unkind to themselves and their bodies and they're not even aware of it you know so um, like another suggestion is just listen to what tapes are playing in your head mm -hmm. what are you telling yourself throughout the day and as you become aware of what you're telling yourself if it's not kind change it if you don't if you change it to something kind and you don't believe it that's okay because if you keep changing it, the tape will eventually begin mm -hmm. to change too. Mm -hmm. And years ago, when I had reached a point where I was like, I am so frustrated with hating myself and hating my body. And I came up with a mantra and it was, um, I love my body, my body is beautiful. And I, I didn't believe it, but I used to always go in the mirror and I would be like, this is before the mantra. Um, I would be like, oh my God, you're so fat. You're disgusting. You're so ugly. You're, ugh, you're so gross. And I would have this every time I would go in the mirror. And so I was like, okay, what can I do to change this? So I came up with that mantra. And every time I would go in the mirror, I would say, I love my body. My body is beautiful. And um, about a year later, I looked in the mirror and I said, I love my body, my body is beautiful. And I was like, oh, I believe that. I believe that now. Wow. And wow. it may have taken a year of you know being conscious about changing that tape, but one day it became our reality. Mm -hmm. And that's only one tool. And that's one just tip. one tool. I know you have a lot <laughs> yeah. of tools so that you can actually accelerate this. You don't have to wait a year to yeah. feel good about your body. Totally, totally. Have you ever heard of that saying, fake it until you make it? Mm, yeah. And so, yeah. like, if you don't love yourself, pretend like you do. Treat yourself as if you did love yourself. Mm -hmm. And you will actually, that is you building the relationship with yourself and your body. Mm -hmm. And it actually becomes a part of who you are. Yeah, you find more and more evidence that it's true. Yeah. Because you're saying that and you're trying to prove it because... Our egos want to be right, right? <laughs> so when we say that, it's like, okay, how can that be right? <laughs> and so that's beautiful, opening up that possibility for people to see themselves in a new way. What's the tip number two? So because we've got kindness, kindness, and then we've got honoring. Um, so honoring yourself and honoring your body. I wake up every single morning and I ask, body, how can I honor you today? And I also ask myself, what can I do to honor myself today? We're such busy people that it's so easy to just put ourselves last, you know? Um, but when we do that, there's actually less of ourselves that can show up in the world. Mm -hmm. But when you take some time, whether it's whatever it is that your spirit needs to feel honored. Um, like just the other day, I was really busy and I had a lot of work to do. And it was really sunny outside and I asked my body, you know, what, what would honor you today? And it was like, I just want to go lay out on my front yard and just lay out in the grass. And so I did that and I did it for like five minutes. My body was like, oh, this is amazing. And my spirit was honored. You know, I had yeah. what, whatever it was that my spirit and my body needed, it got. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to go back and get my work done and I was totally productive. Um, but if I hadn't taken that five minutes for myself in the back of my head, I would have probably been irritated yeah. that I didn't get to 
that I, I've got so much to do and I just wouldn't have been connected to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have been dishonoring myself. And so sometimes honoring yourself takes longer than five minutes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it doesn't, you know? Yeah, I love that tip. Because I know that if there's a part of me that feels a certain way and I'm ignoring it, Mm -hmm. it seems to yell louder and louder the more you ignore it. And just taking that time, even if it's just five minutes, to honor yourself is very powerful. And you you, you don't have to, like, take a special trip and make a big deal out of it. You can even spend five minutes in the morning before you wake up to honor your body. And I actually tried that practice because we were talking the other day, and it was amazing how I felt because... I feel like I take this body for granted sometimes. Like, this is a vehicle. I just got to do this, do that, do that. But when I took the time to actually honor it, it felt like I was growing in the area of self-love. And when I grow in self-love, I grow in confidence. Right. And when I grow in confidence, then I can really live my life the way I want to live. Beautifully said. So it's that chain reaction. And so every morning, first thing, instead of thinking what I have to do... Mm-hmm. It's like connect with the body, like with kindness mm-hmm. and honor it. Yeah. So now you have kindness, honoring, uh-huh. and tell And us- communication. Awesome. So this is one of my favorite things, communicating with my body, because um, it's really fun. Like you can actually ask your body questions like, body, what would you like to do today? Or even like... Um, as far as like exercise, like some people go out there and they're like, I have to go run 60 minutes today because I have to, you know, whatever, burn X amount of calories. And, and sometimes their body just like doesn't feel like it. And then they get injured or whatever because their body doesn't need that mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So um, I believe that everyone has certain beliefs for their body. And that's important to honor. One of my beliefs is that I like to move my body every day in some way. Um, and I just ask it, body, how would you like to move? And um, most of the time for my body, it's a walk. Sometimes it wants to do lunges. Sometimes it wants to go for a run. Sometimes a swim. But when I ask it how it wants to move, there are no injuries because my body is very intelligent. It's, it's conscious. Yeah. So here's a tip for people doing video. Um, so you can also talk to your body in this way. Um, but I, th- I think creating video is all about playing. Like when mm-hmm. I create video, like for instance, I'm wearing red lipstick today. I don't wear red lipstick on a normal basis because it can be messy and it's just, it's just not something I would wear every day. But when I get to do video, um, I think of like, I get to play, right? So I just ask like, Body, what would you like to wear today? What would feel good mm-hmm. on you? And so when I put red lipstick on, it gives me this like extra oomph of self-confidence in front of the camera. And it might be the silliest like thing, yeah, but yeah. you know what? It's like my body, it, it makes me feel like I'm shining on mm-hmm. camera, you know? Yes. And um, this morning I was going to wear something totally different and it just didn't, I don't, it wasn't resonating with me. And so I just asked, okay, body, what would you like to wear? And it was this dress. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I've worn this dress before um, on video. So normally I would be like, well, I want to wear, I want to wear something else. My body didn't. My body wanted to wear this dress. So (laughs) that's what I threw on. And I feel amazing in it today. (laughs) That's fantastic. Yeah, I love your attitude. You know, a lot of people are like, I get the camera on and they're like, well, you're filming. (sighs) But today I had Lemuela come in and I go, Lemuela, there's three cameras and this is your camera. (laughs) And when I said that, she got so excited and it's like, wow, I didn't expect that. I was like, I get my own camera. (laughs) (laughs) I just love that spirit. And it's because you changed the whole paradigm instead of feeling like, oh my God, they're going to see me for something that I'm afraid they're going to see me. It's like, I get to play. Yeah. My body likes this. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. I love to play because I've spent way too much of my life doing everything so seriously. And there are parts of me that are definitely still serious. Like mm-hmm. I know there are times when I, I, I definitely have got to get down to business for some things. But um, I, I'm 37 and I've worked so hard in my life to, um, you know, to go to school and get my undergrad in psychology and get a master's in education and to be a teacher and, you know, to be in a leadership role. And 
I just worked so hard for those things. And now it's like, you know what? I'm tired and I just want to play. <laughs> Can I just do that? Can I just play? Mm -hmm. You know? That's, yes. That's and what's I'm powerful doing. is because we created such a powerful foundation of knowledge and skills it can just flow while you play, you know, <laughs> yeah. you did your work, you did a lot of inner work as well as building your skills through the education system and understanding how to help people, how to coach people yeah. through this process of creating this relationship. So, and I feel like that's the same with a lot of you out there. You have so much, you maybe have done so many different training programs or have degrees and you're still not giving yourself that acknowledgement that you are enough. So why don't you just be you and play and see what comes out yeah. of it. You can create that video. Nobody has to see it. But what I think you'll find is that you'll start to create that relationship with yourself and really learn to shine you. So nice thank you for said. that tip. Yeah. yeah. So I love your book. Your book is amazing. There's actually one part of it, if I could recite it, sure. that was so powerful for me because it resonates with, I think, what is the core of the problem here. And it goes like this. When we don't talk, we stay in secret and in shame. When people talk and share their vulnerabilities, change happens. There is strength, power, and change in being vulnerable. But there is loneliness in appearing strong. And I felt that because there is loneliness in appearing strong. And we, a lot of us think that if we pretend to be strong and we pretend to be perfect and work at that, that that's really the goal. But it's really the vulnerability. Can you share a little bit more about how you came to that conclusion in your journey? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's absolutely, once again, uh, when we are, you know, keeping things, keeping things secret, um, we're not showing up as who we are. And our society does this all over the place, even with, you know, like people live out of their means, you know, mm -hmm. and because they want people to see that they're doing well. Mm -hmm. And when really maybe they're struggling financially, you know, or whatever it is, but when we show up as who we truly are, that gives someone else permission to show up as who they truly are. And then you've got, you know, a group of people now truly being themselves. And now we can spread this permission mm -hmm. to be ourselves, you know? Okay. So for me with my, my body image, um, a lot of that was all in my head, you know, I mean, it was just constantly going in my head that I didn't feel good enough about myself and my body was disgusting and all that. Um, and I didn't share that with a lot of people. I mean, my family members mm -hmm. knew that I was obsessed with my weight. Um, but I just wanted the world to see me as perfect and skinny and beautiful. Yeah. And so that was my secret, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, like when I was 23 and I had, you know, liposuction um, so that I could lose weight because I felt that there was no other way. And what had happened was I had gone through one of my times where I couldn't stop eating in life. I put on a whole bunch of weight and I didn't know how to, like I put on almost 40 pounds in just a few months and I didn't know how to get rid of it. And that was all I wanted to do was to get rid of it because I thought if I could get rid of it, then my, I would be happy again. And um, so I went ahead liposuction and this was really hard for me to write in my book because nobody knew about this mm -hmm. and it was a secret, but I, I was like, I have to share this yeah, because yeah. as long as it's a secret, it's not helping anybody. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like the secrets that we're ashamed of are the ones that own us and have a lot of power over us. So what did you feel after you wrote this in your book and you shared it with the world? Um, it was still like, oh man, <laughs> I put that in there, you know, and even still sharing it right now is like, I, I'm sharing this, you know, um, but there's so many people in the world that are like thinking about this, that maybe their hand is already ready to sign a yeah. document for the doctors to do this process. I mean, and you know, you... I, I wouldn't go back and I, for myself, I wouldn't take it back because I believe that everything is a part of our journey, but 
it makes me sad to look back and be like, well, I was 23 and a doctor, you know, took, I took my $5,000 that I opened up a, a credit card for. Um, I mean, that's the business that he's in. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. It's the business that he's in. But I wish that somebody would have said, you're lovable mm -hmm. or, you know, like you, you don't need liposuction and you don't need to lose weight. You need to realize that you're lovable and that you're worthy mm -hmm. and you need to change your beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Because what, what I found after I had the liposuction was that I still wanted to eat. I still wanted to overeat and I still had the same thoughts. And so that wasn't taken away, uh, with the surgery and what happened not too long after is that I gained the weight back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the real issue wasn't the weight. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the U S people think that if they could just lose weight, then this would get better in their life or they would feel better about themselves. But for most people, they'll find that when they lose the weight, that's not the case. They still don't feel good about themselves. So the key issue is your beliefs that you have mm -hmm. picked up from society. Yeah. About yourself. Yeah. The insecurities about yourself. Yeah. And that's way cheaper, less painful to work on that <laughs> than have processes like liposuction and, and spending hours or uh, years on different programs trying to different lose Different products. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's probably one of the biggest industries. Do you know how big the diet industry is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sixty-five billion dollars a year. Sixty-five billion dollars mm -hmm. a year. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was spent on self-worth, right? On training people on how to be more comfortable with who they are. Yeah. So what would that yeah. take? You know, I think, um, and this is why I wrote the book. Beautiful. Thank you so much, <laughs> yeah. Lenuela, for being here. It's amazing to experience you and your spirit and sharing this gift with the world. I know so many people can benefit from this and will benefit from this. And pretty soon I'll be seeing them shine their light on video. Mm. Yay. And <laughs> thank, thank you. you for having me. Um, I've had so much fun with you today. And everything that you talked about today was just beautiful. Thank and you. you are just a beautiful and magnificent person. Thank you. I appreciate I receive that. Thank you. And I'm going to listen to my body more <laughs> because of you. <laughs> if you like what Lemuela shared with you today, it's only a snippet of what she shares in her book. So go out there, get her book on Amazon.com. Just look for Your Body Relationship. And you'll see other reviews. It has a five-star rating. So many people have benefited from this book and transformed the way that they see their body and live their life. We learned a great deal from Lemuela today, and I encourage you to continue to build that relationship you have with your body, to transform it so that you can feel good about who you are, how you feel, and so that you can step forward on stage or in front of the camera with confidence and ease. Until next time, keep shining your light because the world needs it. Bye-bye now.